title of the book, Tithing on Very, what you do not yet know. Say on very. It's English. It simply means to show you, to have you see, to simplify it, to open it up to you. Amen. Amen. And I want everything I say here today, please catch it, go back home and implement it. It will bless you. Say, I have a responsibility. I have a duty to my local church. Praise God. Praise God. So, I put the title in a very intimidating way on very what you do not yet know. The assumption there is that there are certain things about tithing you are not yet known. It's the assumption. It's not given as, that title is not given to intimidate anyone per se. It's just to challenge you. And this book will teach you, what does it teach you again, Dennis? It teaches you management, huh? Money management and kingdom citizenship responsibilities. That will bring you God's you. Amen. It's easy to come to church and see lightings, walls painted, everywhere concreted, and you take good pictures and go home also. It's another thing to start asking, how does this really come about? Amen. When you start asking like that, know that the consciousness to become a real kingdom steward has come to you. That's the book mock up. It looks like that, and it's right here. Praise God. And uh, the journey to write this and make it available online is not easy. So anyone, anywhere, in any country in the world at any time can read this book. Anywhere. There is no excuse. Like, I know my brother will ship the hard copies to us, those who want to order from Amazon. The question is, how did it all start that I should write this? So this pastor now said, he doesn't know what to do. I said, what do you mean by you don't know what to do? Let's find out what did God say in the beginning? regarding the sustainability of his church. He instituted something called time. And we, today in the New Testament, we don't teach the law to people. We help people see the spirit in the law, the intentions God had for the law, the moral in the law, the principle in the law. Go back to your church and teach them kingdom stewardship, management of God's resources, which tithing and offering is part of it. Amen. And when you will teach them, People are going to be touched because a word no one has received, they will never have light in that area. It is the entrance of the word that gives light and understanding to the simple. Amen. That means if no one is taught tithing so that their doubts and their concerns are cleared up, they will never know. True of us. And when they don't know, no one wants to be giving money. What money is concerned is very sensitive to what they are not sure. Praise God. And especially when people want to manage their resources and have nothing to do with the church. Hey. Amen. And so the journey began with thinking. You know you have to think. Amen. And uh, after the thought processes, God compared me to collect some facts together. It also happened because a young lady really disturbed me a lot with a lot of questions regarding tithing. I was neglecting it. So that's when I became conscious. Something is going on. What am I talking about? And when I started research on it, I was amazed at how much churches are suffocating and using gimmicks. Today, all this seed offering, uh, seed give, you know, seed offering, you know, seed this, seed for that, seed for that. Those are inventions of offerings because tithing is not there. If tithing were there effectively, they would not have to do that because church work must be funded. Say church work must be funded. This is a video projector we are using right here, a mixer, a laser presenter in my hand, chairs we are sitting on, and a building we are sitting right here. Is it for free? See, church work needs to be funded. And it is your responsibility as a child of God to do your part of the contributions so that church work can be funded. Amen. That thinking will lead you to do a lot of things. Say research. You have to research. You have to research. Very important. And. Uh, Studies demand that you should <laughs> check what people did, what they are currently doing, check where they are fought, look at the sensitive areas, and get what the word says about it. From every research, you will always find out something, amen. And that demands a lot of reading. That's why every statement you see in the book is carefully thought out. And someone who is still very, let's say, naive about tithing, they can look at the statements and they become to be personal. They become personal, excuse me. But before I make those statements, I have studied and I can back up every statement written in this book, praise God, with scriptures. 
Now, <laughs> when you do a research, it's not enough. Say self-publishing. Self I'm just giving you highlights. By self-publishing here, yeah, you have to work out everything, read it, contact your private editors and publishers, and pay everything and fund everything. So it demands work. Amen. Quite a lot of work. Can you bend me that laptop a bit? Let me see. Demands a lot of work. So much work. And um, when it demands work, it also demands a lot of cash. Hello, Timothy. Demands a lot of money. Same money. Yeah. So this book here it was not a surprise that it's earlier. It took money for this to be made available for me to read. Two of us. A lot of money at that. Hallelujah. Just follow through. And uh, sometimes you have to work. What shocked me writing this book is that every bit of penny I needed got made away on the spot. I was called for added duties in some hospitals I did not even expect. And so there was added income. Just when I wanted to do printing, I think I did a minimum of 120,000 pounds to begin with the first few copies. And while still thinking, I didn't even pray about it. Amen. I was called somewhere in, a, in time here to start some work. So work was done and money raised. It's not easy. And I know it will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. When I'm done with this, I will tell you what God wanted the church to know. Praise God. While you are doing this self-publishing, you must never neglect your duties as a child of God and as a minister of God at that. I still have to engage other activities. It's not easy, but it's possible with God. So you have to serve even in churches, and I must not fail in my responsibility as a minister of God, meeting the needs of people. Well, there will be time you have to attend to family. Amen. I can assemble a couple babies too in case you are surprised. Uh, Timothy, uh, you're wondering what's going on right here. And uh, sometimes you also have to <laughs> play around as necessary. The family is there, my wife is there, the daughter is there, other responsibilities. And the church is my immediate family right now. I must take care of them. Hallelujah. And there are moments when, after you've researched and gotten certain facts, you think you've gotten enough, you see, see arguments against it. It demands continuous reading and staying up long hours. Uh, I can't post of sleeping very well. Those are the demands, the sacrifices you pay. The good news is once that is all said and done, God rewards the sacrifice with success. Hallelujah. Printing is done, copies are made available. And now I'm ready for distribution. Right there. Praise God. Every diligent service gets rewards from God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I want to thank God for everything. First God and all of you. I want to appreciate all of you who have been there collaborating. Those of you who gave me a platform to share the ideas with you. Those of you who actually responded to questions that I actually asked. And those of you who volunteered and collaborated and did many things. I really want to appreciate God for you all. Now, let me end this brief presentation with something. And what I am about to say is very important. God bless you. Amen. What did God show me regarding the church? What is it that he wants for the church? He wants his church to be disciplined. He wants his church to be prosperous. He wants his church to be successful. He wants his church to be empowered. He doesn't want his church to be manipulative, cunning, and scheming to sustain his activities. God doesn't want the church to be manipulative. God does not also want his church to be going after people in the world begging for money to fund projects. True of us? How many understand what I just said? And so, in researching, I don't see a lot of publications regarding time, but there's a principle in it that we're missing. And the principle is our discipline management. And so he instructed me to write this. Many pastors are happy about the book. And also they are. And uh, a few children of God who really want to practice the word, or who have been tithing and they really thought was wrong, this will bless them. Anyone who reads it will be blessed. The book teaches you principles of management, generally. That you can apply these principles in your private business. It doesn't even have anything to do with the church. And how much more to manage money, God's money, and so in conclusion, the book teaches you how to manage God's money, God's way. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let me end with this. Listen up now. Say 10%. 10%. Say 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%.
This is the principle behind tithing. Every giving from a child of God to God as a sign of worship in church. The starting point is 10%. It's what? 10%. What's the starting point again? 10%. Did you hear what the principle in tithing? The starting point is 10%. And so behind tithing, it has always been about management, training people to learn certain principles. And I'm saying it will be very difficult. So if you earn 12,000 this week, or let's say 10,000 round figure, the starting point for your giving to God as worship is 10%, which is what? 1,000 francs. Then proportionately, you can thank him for all the gifts he's done, blessing your life, and add some others to it. Imagine the church caught this revelation and is actively doing like that. You'll be surprised at what will happen. I was serving in the hospital, a lady saw the book on my, on my table and said, and laughed at something and said, in all honesty, she can never brag of any tithe. And she said, the husband rebuked her, including just two days ago before that, about her irresponsibility. Because every Sunday she was asking the husband to give her money. And he had to sit her down and say, look, you have to choose to proportionately give to God according to how he has prospered you. That's what the word says. See? And of course, she literally said something that uh, she does not even tithe. But she can go and buy a dress for 20,000 francs. Same misplaced priority. Now, the next thing also is that <laughs> her standard offering is 500 francs. How much? Many of you have seen me post to say that I don't know who said that offering in church will be 500 francs. Something is going on. Say we'll correct it in Jesus' name. Conclusion of the matter, Luke 6, 38. How much you want to receive from God as a blessing determines how much you are willing to give. Those are the words of Jesus. He didn't want you to limit just at 10% giving. He's saying go beyond that. Hallelujah. That's the meaning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me end at this level right now. So we save time. God bless you. God bless you.